This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, September 27th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. On Tuesday evening, Anne Arundel County Police Department were notified of a critical missing adult female. The information provided indicated that she may have been murdered by her male boyfriend and still be in his vehicle. Very early yesterday morning, officers located a Chevy minivan operated by Edgar Franklin Manning, a 26-year-old male with no fixed address, in the area of Sappington Station Road and Burns Crossing Road in Odenton. When approached... Manning fought with law enforcement, was taken into custody, and they discovered the deceased body of his girlfriend in the rear of the van. The girlfriend has been identified as Megan Ellen Bordeaux, a 21-year-old female from the 7,000 block of West Drive in Glen Burnie. Police believe that a fight ensued on Monday night in the 800 block of Ritchie Highway in Pasadena. It turned physical, and Manning ended up assaulting the victim, causing her death. Manning has been charged with first and second degree murder. This is a very active investigation right now, and anybody that may have any information that may help police are encouraged to call homicide detectives at 410-222-4731. The Annapolis Police Department yesterday announced the establishment of a departmental LGBTQ liaison. The purpose of establishing the position is to facilitate law enforcement engagement with the LGBTQ community and reporting of potential hate crimes. Sergeant Amy Miguez, who is the spokesperson for the police department, is named as the first LGBTQ liaison. And the primary goal is establishing the position is to gain the trust of the community and seek out information that leads to closure of hate crime and violent crime within that community. Good move on Annapolis Police Department. The Maryland State School Board will now allow non-educators to be appointed as superintendents of school systems. Last year, the board set up a task force to look at allowing local school boards to find, quote, exceptional leaders outside of education circles. There was a lot of pushback on that, and it did lead to some amendments, one of which does require that non-traditional candidates to serve as an interim superintendent for one year, and during that year, they must take six credits of graduate coursework in public school administration, supervision, and teaching methods. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Governor Larry Hogan announced yesterday that he's got another $17 million to give for pedestrian and bicycle safety across the state. Yes, you can tell it is an election year. Three separate state and federal grant programs will provide the funds to transportation agencies, local jurisdictions, and nonprofit organizations for 43 separate projects throughout the state. Here in Anne Arundel County, there is a Safe Routes to Schools project, and also there will be a study to connect the West BNA Trail out to Odenton. Some interesting sports news. Paul Rabel, who was a lacrosse standout from Johns Hopkins from 2005 to 2008 and a resident of Baltimore, is leading a group of sports investors to form the Premier Lacrosse League, which will be a six-team traveling professional league that will debut play in 2019. What's a little bit different is this, is that all of the players will be full-time employees and will receive an equity stake in the league. And 100 players provided notice to Major League Lacrosse of their intention to switch. I wonder what this means for the Chesapeake Bayhawks and their dream of building a facility up in Crownsville. Stay tuned on that one. That is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. It is Thursday, so of course we have Trevor with your Maker Minutes. And as we do every day, we have George Young with your local DMV weather forecast, which looks absolutely spectacular this weekend. Save the date, September 29th and 30th, to see Richard Karn, yes, Al Borland, from the hit television show Home Improvement at the Annapolis Home X. I don't think so, Tim. No, it's true. Richard Karn will be at the Annapolis Home Expo, and while Richard will tell you about what not to do with the home improvement, there will be dozens and dozens of real home improvement contractors to tell you exactly what you should do. Bring in an antique for a free appraisal. Listen to the many workshops to help you make your home into the dream home you always wanted. Thinking about selling or buying? 
Northrop Realty and Craig Northrop will be on hand to offer tips for staging your home and how to negotiate the waters of one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. It all starts on September 29th at the Byzantium Center on Riva Road, Saturday from 10 to 6 and Sunday from noon to 5. Tickets are only $5 at the door, but get this, if you're named Al or anything close or wear flannel, you're in for free. Remember the Annapolis Home Show, September 29th and 30th. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, September 27th. After yesterday's mid-80s and severe evening thunderstorms in the area, today will be much different outside in Annapolis and across all of Anne Arundel County, with chilly highs of 65 to 72 degrees, made even chillier by off and on rain throughout much of the day. Look for rain to possibly linger into the first half of Friday, but temps will warm a bit into the mid to upper 70s as skies start to clear out late, and the expectation at this point for the weekend is for sunny skies and near-perfect temps in the low to mid 70s with the best part being no rain in sight. So just get through the next 24 to 36 hours or so, and then conditions should start to improve as we close out a very rainy month of September. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there. Be sure to follow us on our website at dmvweather.com, on social media at Facebook or Twitter, and on our app at DCMDVA Weather in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. But remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. September 29th, the inaugural Twist and Stout Festival at Quiet Waters Park along the shores of the South River. Twist and Stout, a Maryland wine, craft beer, music, food, and arts festival. Presented by the Anne Arundel County Department of Recreation and Parks along with the Maryland Wineries Association. Sample dozens of craft beers and Maryland wines. Dance the afternoon away to the sounds of Saved by Zero and the Groove Spot Band. Watch the plein air painters and shop dozens of artisans, crafters, and food trucks. Tickets are on sale now at twistandstout.org. T-W-I-S-T-A-N-D-S-T-O-U-T dot org. September 29th, Twist and Stout at Quiet Waters Park, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tickets at twistandstout.org. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. Highlighting some of those, here's our Makers Minute, brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. Hey, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. The county fairs are finally winding down, and we have one more to go. Starting yesterday and going through this weekend is the Calvert County Fair, and with the county fairs out, the fall festivals are kicking in. Saturday in Eldersburg, just north of Columbia, is the Piney Run Apple Festival. Enjoy everything apple, as well as family craft making activities, scarecrow making, hay rides, music, and more. Saturdays and Sundays, now through the end of October, is the Homestead Gardens Fall Festival in Davidsonville. In their 35th year, Homestead Gardens Fall Festival is one of the largest in the area, featuring hay rides, a pumpkin patch, corn maze, corn cannon, Pollinator Express, Corn Box, Carnival Games, Pony Rides, Beer Garden, and their amazing apple cider donuts. Also with food, including Beards Creek Barbecue. Also now through the end of October is Green Street Gardens Fall Festival in Lothian, featuring many of the same things, but also including a petting zoo, spider web, and tire tower. Saturday in Columbia is the Hops and Harvest Fall Festival, featuring 75 Maryland beers, wines, and spirits, along with 25 Maryland artisans and other vendors, as well as local food, live entertainment, games, and more. Also Saturday is the Oella History Hike at the Benjamin Banneker Historical Park and Museum near Ellicott City. Learn local history while hiking three and a half miles at the Banneker Park, and advanced registration is required. And do you know the story of Cassiopeia, or how to make your own glow water? This Sunday, at the Irvine Nature Center in Owings Mills, check out Moonlight Mania. Learn the mysteries of the stars, create your own constellation, and watch the stages of the moon in person. Starting today and running all weekend is the third annual Baltimore Book Festival, Baltimore's premier celebration of literary arts, showcasing renowned and celebrity authors, book signings, panel discussions, children's activities, and more. Also this weekend, in Edgewater, there's the Muddy Creek Artist Guild Studio Tour. This third annual Artist Studio Tour showcases guild artists working in a variety of media in an open house at their respective studios. And finally this weekend, in Halethorpe, is the Charm City Fly-In Radio Control Airplane Festival. This annual event is the largest celebration of radio-controlled flying in Maryland, with two days of demonstrations, air shows, and hands-on experience with radio-controlled planes, jets, helicopters, and more. Starting Monday and running the entire month of October, 
is Freefall Baltimore. It's a citywide art celebration featuring more than 300 free arts and cultural activities at venues around Baltimore. Check their website for a full list of participating venues. Sunday at Clay Bakers in Annapolis is another Clay Day, this one featuring a clay Christmas tree that you would make. This week at the Anne Arundel County Public Library System, Today and Deal is Coding Club. Learn how to use Scratch, a programming language, to code video games and other fun things. Friday at Discoveries, the library at the mall, is Butterflies from Caterpillar to Fantastic Flight. Learn about the butterfly life cycle and create a beautiful butterfly of your own. Monday at the Severn Library is Bienvenidos Amigos. Welcome to Costa Rica. Experience music, food, language, and traditional Costa Rican culture. And Wednesday, also at the Severn Library, is a library campout. Camping fun for the whole family from the comfort of the library. Learn about campfire safety and join them for campfire stories, sing-alongs, and blanket tents. Tuesday at Annapolis Makerspace is our monthly Fusion 360 workshop. Mondays are our weekly woodworking night. And as always, you can catch me every Thursday night for Electronics Night at Annapolis Makerspace on Renard Court. I'll be posting links to these events on the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeannapolis.org sometime today. And whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. When you think of Watermark, you probably think of Harbor Queen. You know, the big white boat that sits down at the end of City Dock. But did you know that Harbor Queen is much more than just a visitor attraction? That thousands of local school children take field trips aboard it every year to learn about the Chesapeake Bay and our region's history. But that's not all you don't know about Watermark. When the Susquehanna River crested, washing thousands of tons of debris into our waterways, Watermark was there, rolling up their sleeves, helping the Annapolis Harbor Master clean up Ego Alley, and when the Annapolis Police Department SWAT team needed a boat to conduct special training exercises on to help protect our waters, they called Watermark. Watermark, making our mark. To learn more about how Watermark is here for our hometown, visit watermarkjourney.com. So many different stories in the news, and everyone has an opinion. Here's ours. Finally, it seems that Annapolis has crossed a milestone, a watershed moment. Finally, we can move on from the inconsequential issues of bike lanes, nuisance flooding, vacant storefronts, and a still divided community and concentrate on the larger, more pressing issues of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the latest outrage du jour for Annapolitans. Socks. Yes, socks. It seems that there's a knick-knack shop in the former Guzzi Mall, which is now dubbed the Cannery, that is selling socks that are offensive. Mind you, these are not offensive socks like those of a 12-year-old boy fresh off the soccer field. Oh, no, 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 no. These are much worse. They have writing on them. And not just any writing, but humorous, innuendo-laden writing. Imagine the horror. They have such sayings as, bitches get stuff done, and... This meeting is bullshit, which I can't disagree with either of those sentiments. And one of the most offensive of all, ringmaster of this shit show. Unlike the Capitol who first reported on these atrocities, we can actually use the terms. In Jimmy DeButt's article, he said that the city has received formal complaints about the Sox. He got quotes from Visit Annapolis and the local alderwoman, all opposed to the Sox with writing. Is this really the most pressing issue we have? Three doors down, Pip's Dock Street Dogs has been out of business for several days because we're still not working on the nuisance flooding. The University of Maryland may be responsible for a football player's death. We have a gubernatorial election going on, a Supreme Court nominee scandal, homeless people in our very own community, and people living in poverty here in Annapolis. But we're pissed off about socks? I'm outraged that people put pineapple on pizza. What the hell is that? And I am offended that it's on the menu. But I'm not writing to City Hall to take action. Many people don't drink. Is there a movement afoot to tell the bars and liquor stores to stop selling alcohol? Is it any wonder that businesses avoid coming to Annapolis when this is the shit they need to put up with? To the folks writing to City Hall, if you're offended, shop with your wallet. Don't buy the stuff. If the display offends you, here's a novel concept. Look somewhere else. Jesus, people, get a grip. And that's what I'm thinking today. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. 
Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.